Now, if you do not know already, this weekend has been declared a weekend of prayer by none other than President Uhuru Kenyatta. Starting tomorrow all the way to Sunday, the country is supposed to be in a prayerful mood, petitioning the Almighty on a number of national issues, culminating with an actual prayer meeting at State House Nairobi on Saturday. Now, this is obviously a good thing. After all, some of us who pray believe that prayer actually ought to be a daily discipline. But I'm interested in this weekend of prayer for several reasons. One, the call has been made by the president himself. Two, this is not the first time we are holding prayers of this nature. And finally, because many of the commitments we have made at previous prayer sessions have almost always gone with the wind. In May 2018, for instance, we had the annual National Prayer Breakfast at which all the leading political figures in the country pledged to bury the hatchets following the disputed 2017 election. On that day, President Uhuru Kenyatta, his deputy William Ruto, ODM leader Rai Laudinga, and WIPA leader Kalonzo Musioka exchanged bear hugs and pledged all manner of good manners going forward in what was termed by some newspaper headlines as a miracle. And on that day, two things were resolved, that the leaders would gang up against corruption in the country, and then they would ensure that no Kenyan ever died again because of an election. Now, those two promises alone have been broken right in front of our eyes in the last few days and weeks. Just this past weekend, two young Kenyans lost their lives in Moranga in what was by all means an election-related incident. Now, don't ask me which election, now that 2022 is still two years away. We can also not claim to have ganged up against corruption as promised. Instead, the political class stands accused tonight of ganging up to encourage corruption, argue with each, with each other about which corruption was better or more serious than the other, or look the other way as billions of shillings leave public coffers for private pockets. Now, the net effect of this is that we are worse off in many respects than since that miracle of May 2018. So shall we now say that we haven't prayed enough or that all the prayers we have made have actually failed? There are only two possibilities I can think of. Either God is not listening to our prayers or we are waiting for God to do that which we can just go ahead and do. Or perhaps it is both. And because it is a weekend of prayer, ladies and gentlemen, I can only fall back to the good book for some answers. You see, in the Bible, there are many instances where God literally refused to answer prayers. Not because the people didn't pray hard enough, but because they came to pray with what prophet Isaiah calls blood in their hands. And I will now quote generously from that book of Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 13 on what God told the prophet to tell the people. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incest is, incense is detestable to me. New moons, sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your worthless assemblies, your new moon feasts, and your appointed festivals. I hate with all my beings. They have become a burden to me. I'm weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I'm not listening. Your hands are full of blood, end of quote. So I ask myself tonight, could this be our situation in Kenya today? Perhaps I should read on from the holy book. Here's what it says in verse 16. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Ladies and gentlemen, the president should no doubt be commended for reminding us to pray. But prayer cannot be a substitute to action. The same Bible actually says faith without works or action is actually dead. Why don't we prosecute those who steal public money? Why do we continue to use young people to kill each other in the name of politics? Why is there no justice in government offices and our courtrooms? Why? 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 So tonight, I have only one prayer. That this weekend's prayers will only be about one thing, repentance. And then we can wake up on Monday morning 
and just begin to do the right thing. That's my angle tonight.